it's Ashley and welcome back to my Aquarius life and I wanted to talk about last year when I got COVID and um, I meditated during my fever I actually didn't know it was COVID till like day three when you know the smell and taste thing happened but um, I thought it was just a mild flu anyways my fever kicked in and um, I wanted to tell you about my meditation epiphanies I guess you could call them I don't that's what I call them epiphanies um, things that just come to me and uh, yeah so here's the story so first of all a little backstory I do not um, typically use uh, THC for sleeping. I used to. I used to take five milligrams for bed at night just to help me go to sleep. And uh, I stopped taking it because I like to dream. And my dreams, I wouldn't have dreams if I took it. And um, last year, 2020, um, I would medicate for my anxiety and it no longer started helping my anxiety, it was causing my anxiety. So I was like not using um, the plant as medicine, like, or recreational or anything, I wasn't using it. And so what happened was um, my husband got sick and um, so I knew it was, an, you know, it cycles through the house, you know, we have three kids, so, um, when someone gets it, it's inevitable. So what happened was, um, he got sick, like I said, and, um, I felt a little off, not completely, but I was putting our two youngest boys to sleep for nap time. And, um, I was like, I'm going to nap too. Cause I just feel like crud. And so I was like, you know, I knew I was getting it, whatever he had. And so I took um, five milligrams of an edible to help me go to sleep. I, I can't nap. I do not nap. I can't nap. I wish I could. I can't. <laughs> so I took um, that to help me nap with the boys. And um, I got my youngest down and then my other one they were in the room with me uh, when I was trying to sleep and my uh, five-year-old he he fights naps sometimes he, he needs them but he fights them and so he was he ended up not napping the whole time but um, I was laying there with my eyes shut because I started to get a fever and um, I was letting the fever cook because I think that's better than just, you know, using over-the-counter meds to just, you know, take that away, I guess. You know, I'd rather not use it if, unless I have to. So I'm letting the fever cook and um, I was doing this meditation for 27 days. It's actually, so I have, notes I'm going to be reading from because they were in my phone but um, so I was doing the meditation from the youtuber star magic healing and um, specifically the energy healing secrets radically shift your vibration in 25 27 days um, meditation and so I was doing the 27 days and I had to do it this day and I was like, I'm gonna do it during nap. And um, so, you know, here I am trying to do the meditation and um, I have my eyes closed. I couldn't sleep for the life of me. I never ended up falling asleep, um, but the edible kicked in and my fever, it ended up, I ended up taking my temperature later on and it was like, around 103. Um, I did end up taking ibuprofen for it because I had to be a mom and I literally, uh, 
you know, fevers are different for adults than they are for kids. So my fever, like I couldn't, I just couldn't be a functioning mom w unless I took it because my husband had the same thing going on. So anyways, I had to mom up. <laughs> um, so I take ibuprofen later. But anyways, forgive my anyways all the time. Um, I was meditating and um, I had my eyes closed, obviously. And I had all these memories, or not memories, but like I call them epiphanies come to me. Um, I was just thinking of all these things that my brain would never typically go to. Um, you know, cue fever. That happens with a fever in general. And cue, you know, THC when you never use it, especially. So, um, yeah, I started, not only was I able to see with my third eye completely, um, but I had these visions come to me and I wrote them all down. So uh, my son, like I said, my five-year-old, he would not fall asleep. And I told him <sighs> with my eyes closed, I could see him sitting up and staring at me in the uh, there's a bed next to our bed and I could see him in the position he was in staring at me and I was it, it was just basically I was seeing with what you would with your eyes but my eyes were closed and so I'm like you know I had no strength I was in so much pain and I was telling him like please stop staring at me <laughs> and I like slowly turn my head over and I look at him and he's in the same exact position staring at me that I saw with my eyes closed and he smirks and he's like oh, okay like how'd you know and lays down and um, I continue the meditation and this is what ended up coming to me um, I'll put this timestamp in here if you want to fast forward through the seven minutes that I've just been talking. Okay, so the first one is, so, well, first of all, all these things were coming to me and it wasn't until like the third one where I was like, oh my God, I gotta, I have to write this stuff down in my phone. So it, I mustered up all my strength to like go to the end of my bed and like grab my phone that was charging and like, um, you know, start writing the stuff down, which was hard in itself. Like, you know, sucks being sick. Um, but the first thing that I realized was after leaving one trauma, you find yourself in another. It doesn't seem like it at first because it's a different pain than the last one. So that's a heavy, heavy statement. Um, I'll try not to get emotional. <laughs> but, you know, eventually I'll share some of my story on here. We all have a story, though, and we all go through terrible things and beautiful things you know that's life and um, you know but I just realized that really when you are so conditioned to trauma or it's just what you're used to um, it's so easy to fall into another trauma but it doesn't feel like it at first because the pain is different so it's like oh at least it's not that other trauma that I was feeling before, but the cycle continues. You know, when you finally break free from that other trauma, you realize, you know, it's just a different pain. So that was a really deep uh, epiphany, if you will. So the other one is 
you are less likely to repeat trauma in general if you operate at a higher level. So meaning vibrationally, if you operate, like if you, you know, no one's perfect, even in the spiritual community, you know, it's, it's such a beautiful community, but no one's perfect and everyone goes through things. There's darkness and light constantly throughout life. It's a roller coaster ride. So if you aim to operate at a higher vibrational level, which, you know, eating the right foods, avoiding things that you know aren't good for you, doing things that are good for you, um, striving to always work on yourself and be a better person. We all can be a better person. Even someone you idolize, your guru, everyone can always strive for better. That is what's so beautiful about being human. You, There's always something you can strive, you know, to do to better yourself. So there's that one. <laughs> and then, oh, I should also add before I add this next one. I didn't start writing down these epiphanies probably until the third or fourth one came to me and I was like, oh my God, I have to write these down. Like they're just coming one after the other. And I was like, okay, I couldn't remember like the epiphany I had, like the very last one. So I wrote down like the two I first remembered and then I was like, shoot, what was that other one? And so I sat there and I was like, you know what? Actually, I'll read this last epiphany and then you'll understand what I'm about to say more. <laughs> I'm all over the place, sorry. Uh, there is no future or past. There is only different parallel dimensions. So, having said that, and I'll touch on that a little bit more, but having said that, when I grabbed my phone to, and started taking the notes and I realized I didn't remember the last epiphany I had, I, in my brain, was cycling through my memories. Like if you can imagine, there is no past or future. There's just all these, you know, dimensions all right next to each other. They're all parallel, right? So I was sifting through them as if they were like files. I was just sifting through them like, okay, I know the memory's here somewhere. Where is it? And I literally remembered what I had forgotten because I came across that file. I know it sounds crazy, but it was actually the Akashic Records that I was discovering. And so I remembered because I came across that dimension and I was able to write it down. And it, it didn't dawn on me that it was the Akashic Records until I met up with one of my good friends who actually does Akashic Record readings. She's such a beautiful person, inside and out. And, um, oh, the baby's up, hold on. Come here, come here. Are you okay? You want some boob? Okay. Oh my God, you're so big. Over the cord, over the cord. <sighs> So it wasn't until I spoke with her and I told her of these things that came to me during this time that she said, that is the Akashic Records. What's the matter? 
<laughs> you don't know? Do you want to watch a show? Yeah? Adeline, can you please put on a show? No, no, no. What do you need? Do you want Do you want a snack? Do you want an orange? No? Do you want a fruit bar? No. What do you want? What do you want? The Kindle? You have to tell me what you want. What do you want? Did you have a good enough nap? I guess you did. Do you want more food? Okay, so like I was saying, my friend who does Akashic Records readings, she said, Oh my God, Ashley, that is the Akashic Records that you accessed. That was how I accessed that memory I had just forgotten. You know, just sifting through it like files, literally. That is literally what I was doing. So, um, and also to understand that epiphany better that there is no future or past there's only different parallel dimensions is it's gonna sound funny but the Netflix series the OA it will make sense such a good series Netflix just had to cancel it but yeah so that will help you understand it a little bit more um, and then the next one that I have written down directly correlates with the meditation that I mentioned at the beginning of the star magic healing uh, channel so within that meditation um, I don't know where the mouse is baby I, I did check the counter all right Shuffling children and vlogging is interesting. Okay, so, um, you all done? Side poop. Side poop. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, so um, picture what I'm about to describe. Um, because within the meditation, he actually describes this um, I can't even find the words for it. He describes to find or to picture what I'm basically going to tell you to picture. But I saw it at a whole different level because like I said, I've been doing I, I did this meditation for 27 days and um, I don't know what day I was on at this point. It was probably in the 20s and I had not pictured it yet like this. So um, like so in detail and so I'm going to describe my detail. There is someone in front. <laughs> What's the matter? There is someone in front of me, and we are in the universe. Both our hearts open towards each other to give and receive love. Okay. What's the matter? You want your shirt off? Your tummy hurt? It does. Do you want some water? You want some water? Here. Water? Okay. 
I'll start that over. So picture there is someone in front of me and we are in the universe. Both our hearts open towards each other to give and receive love. There is no back to our hearts. The whole is infinite, like a cyclone and expansion into and of the universe. That is such a deep thing that literally you have to probably hear it twice. Hold on. Okay, so forgive all the interruptions. I can only make videos during nap time and I guess today was an early nap time for the two year old. So I'm going to repeat the picture, like picture, you know, what I was seeing in the guided meditation because it's just like really hard to picture the first time you hear it. There is someone in front of me and we are in the universe. Like we're just floating in the universe. Like we are essentially the universe. Both our hearts are open towards each other. So we're facing each other to give and receive love. So I'm receiving love from this person at the same time as I'm giving love to this person and there is no back to our hearts. So it's literally, the whole is infinite and it's like a cyclone. Like it's just like the love is like endless and it keeps going through us like all together as one. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, that, and ex it expands into and is of the universe so uh it's so deep because truly we are all one we're all one and we're all of the universe like it took me a while to truly grasp that um yeah we all have our own consciousness you know our own souls but we are all one together like it's so hard to explain until that light bulb moment goes off in your brain and you're like I get it I, I get it now it took me a while um, and so the next epiphany is manifesting into the universe is manifesting within ourselves we are the universe and are more likely to take little but appropriate steps towards that dimension usually unknowingly another super deep one so if you manifest, you understand that you put that out into the universe, to the to source energy, to the divine. You put it out there, you know, to God who is of everything. And so when you are manifesting that, because all of us are of the universe, we're all connected, it's like we're just manifesting within ourselves and doing so you are more likely to do the tiny steps that's needed to reach that full manifestation so you know whether you realize it or not you're taking tiny steps towards that because it's it's your goal it's something you want it's something you're manifesting so you know you're going to do things 
to aim towards that goal. Um, and if you aren't, I'm sure you are taking tiny steps that aren't even noticeable towards that goal, towards that dimension, towards that full manifestation. I hope this makes sense. <laughs> Um, and then the last one is where you focus thought energy grows. I think that just falls right in line with manifesting. Um, where you focus your thoughts, that is where energy goes. That is where you are creating reality. Um, yeah, that is literally, that's, how prayer works. I mean, look at any religion. Prayer is like manifesting, no matter what you believe in. And I learned this when I studied um, Wicca. I, I was raised Christian, uh, changed my beliefs a lot since then. And, but it's all religions are connected. And when you pray to your God, that is where your energy grows. That's where it flows. And that's what you're putting out there when you pray or manifest or however it is you put it out there. So that is it. <laughs> um, that was my meditation epiphanies while I had the COVID fever and took a five milligram edible. And just so you know, like I never went to the doctor. I never got tested. Like I was fine. We, our family was just fine with COVID. Um, you know, it was a blessing for me personally. Um, and I'm grateful we were all just fine. Um, it was a lot easier than the flu we had a year ago. I'll tell you that. Um, but yeah, so I hope something resonated for you or um, awakened something in you or whatever. Hope you liked it. Uh, if you have any questions, just post comments and I'll reply to you. Maybe make videos on it if I need to elaborate. Um, but yeah pretty awesome. Thanks guys. Bye.